Greetings to all of you. I especially want to express today my gratitude for my patrons, my subscribers, for those of you who watch these videos and comment on them. I am deeply moved by the community, the conscious community that we are weaving with each other, for each other, to support each other in these intense times. And I want to talk today more about the energies that we're moving through now in 2021. And in particular, talk more in depth about the Saturn Uranus square that we will be in all of 2021 and through most of 2022. I do believe that with the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, we have crossed a critical threshold point. Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius are guiding us to dream the new forms into being that are the energies of the Aquarian age that we're moving into. But we're still in a turbulent transition time, which many of us feel personally and collectively. One of the things that we have been talking a lot about in these videos and in the community comments is how important it is to hold a sense of hope and love and higher consciousness in this profound time of transformation and transition. But I want to say it's important as we do that to not override all of the feelings that we may experience in this time. The fear, the pain, at times the despair, the sadness, the frustration, the bewilderment, the confusion. You know, being on planet Earth is where we are in a cauldron of evolution through understanding the realm of emotions how we feel, what we feel, being aware of our emotional experience is a critical part of our growth and evolution on this planet. And at the same time, we need to remember that we are souls having an embodied experience. In, and when we can hold that higher consciousness and deeper understanding then we can hold the full spectrum of what we feel without getting identified with it or mired in it. At the same time, as we're moving through such a profound time of transformation, it is activating any of the unresolved issues that we carry individually, as well as activating memories of our trauma collectively. I know in my own life, I'm really having to deal all the layers of what I haven't fully faced or healed from the past. And it's an incredible time in which those issues are very much on the surface. And it can open a pathway for healing for each of us. And it's important that we face and heal that trauma, which means feeling it, working it through, integrating it in order to come into healing and wholeness so that we are not derailed, blocked, or caught unconsciously in those patterns from the past. And it's important for us collectively to be aware that we have been through cataclysmic trauma on this earth before. There have been five previous mass extinctions and there have been cataclysms in the time of our human experience on this earth that we carry in our unconscious awareness. And if we don't face that and also heal that, we're in danger of getting caught in our fear or our reenactment of that. So I want to reiterate, this is a critical time for each of us 
to do our own healing process so that we can move through this time of change, holding all that we feel in light and love and compassion, and then able to evolve and grow and move into these new paradigms and this higher consciousness. So let's talk more about this Uranus-Saturn process that we're in. It's really important to hold that in the context of the larger cycle, which began in February of 1988, when Saturn and Uranus were conjunct. And what's extraordinary is they came into connection and started this cycle that we're in at 29 degrees of Sagittarius, meaning at the time of that conjunction, Saturn and Uranus were in alignment with the galactic center. The beginning of a synodic cycle, the beginning of that conjunction that then moves through a journey where Saturn moving faster than Uranus eventually goes through its first square, then opposition, then final square, and back to conjunction again. That journey is about 45 years for Saturn and Uranus in their process together. And it's important to remember that where they begin that journey is the energetic that's seeding the process that will unfold. Saturn and Uranus at 29 degrees of Sagittarius is really a call to come back into alignment with Source, the galactic center, to analyze and transform how we hold our beliefs, Sagittarius, and to embark on this journey of change. Think about the energies of Saturn and Uranus together. One of the things that I'm that I feel very strongly is that Saturn has often been misunderstood. The meaning of Saturn relates to the fact that it is our outermost visible planet. So it's right at that threshold between our visible reality and invisible reality. And Saturn as a planet is exquisitely beautiful and is the least dense of all of our planets. Saturn is less dense than water. So if you think about Saturn as being on that threshold between invisible reality and visible reality, it is the one who is guiding us as we come from the other realms, come into form, into incarnation. So Saturn is the shaman, the guide, the wise one at that threshold helping us move from our soul selves into embodiment here on the earth. And Saturn being less dense than water is saying, come into form, but hold it lightly, hold it fluidly, do not attach. Be in this experience, be in your embodiment, honor and celebrate this unique experience in this incarnation, but don't get mired in your identification with it. Hold it lightly. Uranus is the next planet out in our solar system and is a very unusual planet in many ways, but one of the things that's unique about Uranus is the way in which it moves through its orbit it's as if it's lying on its side so that its poles are oriented towards the sun rather than the equator, like us here on Earth. Uranus is this rule breaker. It's the planet that doesn't fit the norms with which other planets operate. So Uranus is that planet guiding us to break out of the forms and structures that bind us to see what's true, what's authentic. It is the truth teller. It is the rule breaker and the one 
that guides us in how to honor justice, diversity, to accept each other as we are. Uranus guides us to dare to think outside the box, to be innovators, inventors, rebels, rule breakers. So at its best, Uranus is guiding us to not get caught in conventions or traditions or cultural boxes, but to dare to question and to really seek the truth. Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. It's guiding us to align our ways of knowing with cosmic consciousness, to get out of our own minds and our own limited perspectives to see things from that larger perspective and to not get caught in consensual reality, but to really honor authenticity, diversity, justice. So you put these two planetary energies together and at their best, Uranus is guiding us to value truth and justice and equality and bring it in to form Saturn and to be fluid with that and open to change. One of the things we talk a lot about in these videos is the importance of working with these planetary energies with consciousness. Because when we don't, then we can get caught in the shadow side of those planetary energies in a way that is more stressful for us. So if these energies of Uranus and Saturn are not worked consciously, then Uranus can manifest as uh, not breaking the rules to value authenticity and uniqueness, but rebellion for rebellion's sake. It can end up being eruptions, radical, erratic behavior, reactivity. And Saturn can actually, when it's operating from a lower level of consciousness or a place of fear, can be about staying caught in certain forms and structures out of a need for a sense of security or control. And then it can create this tension between those two planets that can be very volatile. Uranus pushing for change, Saturn striving to hold on to old forms or consensual reality, and then it can lead to eruptions and tumult and turbulence. We're likely to see all of that playing out in 2021 because we see how polarized we are on the planet right now and how many of us are really moving into higher consciousness and new paradigms and many are caught in fear and confusion and insecurity and therefore striving to hold on to the traditions and patterns of the past. Let's hold that with compassion, but stay with the deeper meaning of these planetary energies and how they're guiding us into these new ways of being. As we do that, we really can honor where we are in this cycle with Saturn and Uranus now. We're at the stage in their cycle of the third quarter square. So the journey began in 1988. And interestingly enough, that was the year after the harmonic convergence, a critical time in the Mayan calendar of move into clarity and purification to be preparing for the transformation that is to come. Saturn and Uranus in alignment with the galactic center. Align your soul self with source. Allow your beliefs to transform, to open, to be in this profound transformational process. Then we moved into the first square with Saturn squaring Uranus in 1999 with Saturn 
in Taurus and Uranus in Aquarius. Uranus in Aquarius trying to begin to help us understand these paradigms of the Aquarian age we're moving into and to be open to being in that transition. The first quarter is a crisis of action. How are we moving forward? What is this journey about? And it was about how do we begin to open to the Aquarian paradigms and Saturn and Taurus bring them into form and into how we relate to the earth, Taurus. Then we come to the opposition of Saturn and Uranus in 2009. And now Uranus is in Pisces, Saturn is in Virgo. So this is the time in the cycle of gaining clarity about what this journey is really about. With Uranus in Pisces, it is about open to those ways of knowing through your connection with the oneness of all that is, Pisces. Open to truth with compassion. Open to the realization that we're all interconnected. Remember our connection with the spiritual realms, Pisces. And Saturn in Virgo, bring into form what is of service to others and is in right relationship with the earth, Virgo. Bring into form what is healing, what is nurturing, Separate what is of value from what we can let go of, Virgo. Now we're at the third quarter square with Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus, the opposite of what it was at the first quarter square. This is the point in the journey where we're realizing the wisdom of this process that we've been in and really distilling what we need to in this journey and realizing that this is a cycle of transformation and transition and how do we integrate the value of what we've learned, share it and prepare for the movement into a new cycle. This is the time where it can be a crisis in consciousness, in honoring the journey but being open to change. With Uranus in Taurus, it's guiding us to have clarity, openness, to be just and fair in how we deal with our resources how we deal with our relationship with the Earth, Taurus. Saturn in Aquarius bring those new forms into the world in a way that is honoring the Aquarian paradigms, that is about justice, fairness, community, collaboration, honoring our interconnectedness. If we work this consciously, particularly as this Saturn-Uranus square is happening after this beginning of the Jupiter-Saturn cycle, which is helping us dream these new Aquarian forms into being, then Saturn can help us embody them, enact them, commit to them, and be in this transformational process in a way that's allowing our lives individually to transform and allowing us collectively to reconfigure the systems and structures of our global community. But again, if we don't deal with this time consciously, it can be a time of tension and conflict and turbulence and reactivity and a polarization between these new forms that are coming into being and a rigidity in trying to hold on to the past. So again, as we move through this turbulent time, let's hold with compassion the spectrum 
of experience that people are having in this time. But let us hold with consciousness what this journey is about and support each other in being in this profound time of transition and transformation as we move towards more fully entering the Aquarian Age at the end of 2024. Then this can be a journey that can be exhilarating and full of wonder and beauty even as we deal with the turbulence of what we're letting go of to move into this new age. We and the earth are in a profound time of transformation and it can be a movement into new life, into an evolutionary leap where there is more honoring of our interconnectedness with each other, diversity, being in right relationship with each other. Or if we get mired in our fear and our reactivity, we will go down a path of resetting to go through a cataclysmic evolutionary process in order to learn and grow. How we move through this transitional time is up to us, the choices that we make. And if enough of us are working this time consciously, it will support the collective in moving through this time of transition in a profound way into new paradigms and a higher consciousness. May we support each other in this time and honor this journey and what we're each working individually and to hold space for that process for us all collectively. Blessed be.